Math 98, we're going to take a look at section 7.5. And in this section, we're really going to just uh, do a quick review, overview, all of our techniques. So we'll, I'm just, this is going to be an, a, an assortment of problems to think about to, uh, for factoring. So I'm going to get some written down here. And we'll start with these. So uh, this first one just has two terms in it. And actually, before I go any further, in this chapter, in 7.5, if you look in the, in the uh, textbook, in the online text, there is a, a chart that has flow charts. It has all these directions like, if this, then use this technique. So it's a nice little grounding. So I really strongly recommend you take a look at that. So take a look at this first one. I've got two terms. First thing on everything I'm always going to try to do is see if there's a greatest common factor. See if there's something I can factor out. And on this one, it looks like a 4 goes up both into, the, into both of these and an x to the 4th. So I'm going to factor out a 4x to the 4th. And if I do that, if I notice what's left here is just an x, and what's left here is just a 3, and I can't go any further than that. That is fully factored. Okay, next one. Greatest common factor, nope. Doesn't look like it. There's not something that goes into all three of them. So uh, three terms. I'm going to use that AC method because it has a leading term other than one. So let's see, a times c, uh, 12 times two is 24. And I want things that multiply to 24, but add to negative 11. And so they're both gonna be negative, right? Multiply to a positive number, add to a negative. So negative one, negative 24. I'm just gonna list factors till I found it. find it. 12, let's see, negative three and uh, Eight, negative eight. I think that's it. Negative three and negative eight. So um, what I do now is I split that negative 11 up into a negative three and a negative eight. So I've got 12x squared minus 3x uh, minus 8x plus two. And now I do some factoring by grouping. So factor these two, factor those two. Just greatest common factor out of each of those. There's a 3x in both of these. So if I take out a 3x, that's going to leave me a 4x minus 1. And then in this one, I'm looking to match that 4x minus 1. So I'm going to take out a negative 2 in both of these to make this first term positive. So if I take, divide out a negative 2, that makes this a positive 4x. 2 divided by a negative 2 is a negative 1. So I've got this good match. Now I can factor out that 4x minus 1. And that is fully factored. There's my answer to that one. All right, this next one, uh, a cubed minus 25a. Again, first thing, greatest common factor. Is there something that I can divide out of here? And it looks like I can get an a out of each of these. That leaves me with an a squared minus 25. And that feels good, but let's not start, uh, pat ourselves on the back just quite yet, because what's left in here, I can factor this. This is the difference of two squares, right? This is a squared, and this is 5 squared, and it's the difference, subtracting them. So I can split that into a plus 5 times a minus 5. And now these are, these are linear. So I'm done. There it is. That one is. All right, just a few more here. So I'm looking at this. Greatest common factor. Nope, nothing I can take out. And I could jump into that AC method. That would, that would work. One of the things I noticed, though, is 4 and 9. Those are both perfect squares. So there's a possibility that this is a perfect square trinomial. And again, if, if you don't see that, that is okay. You could, uh, like I said, just use that AC method and you'll still get there. But I noticed that this is 2A squared, this is 3B squared, and this middle term is 2 times 2A times 3B. Yeah, 4 times 12AB. Yeah, so this means this is a perfect square, so this factors to 2a minus 3b, that whole thing squared. And again, if you don't see that right off the bat, use ac. You'll see. Look at this next one, 24 and 81. I could factor out uh, a 3. Yeah, I could factor out a 3 on each of these to start with. So 3, that leaves me an 8y cubed plus 27. And that feels pretty good. That's a great common factor. And now I notice I've got these two things added together. Um, these aren't squares, but these are cubes. In other words, this is 2y cubed, and this is 3 cubed. So this is the sum 
of cubes. So I know how to factor that. It's uh, the first one, same sign, same operator, the second one, times the first one squared. Uh, opposite, opposite operator now. So since that's plus, this is minus. Uh, the first one times the second. So 3 times 2y is 6y uh, plus the last one squared. And there is that one. All right. And taking a look at this last example, one, two, three, four. I've got four uh, terms here. And this is a six and this is a b. Uh, my handwriting is outstanding. So I hope that you can see that. I'll try and make that look more like b. I hope that helps. Um, so, since I've got four terms, I'm going to factor this by grouping. So, on these ones, these first two, they both got a 3x I can take out. And I'm looking for an x plus 2b to match to factor over here. So, since these are both negative, I'm going to take out a negative 3a. Right? These both have a 3a in them. That leaves me an x plus, because I took out the negative, a 2b. Oh, great. These both have that in it. I can factor it out. X plus 2B times 3X minus 3A. And I'm there, fully factored. So again, like I said, in this unit, uh, this section, it's a bunch of just technique practice. So you can practice everything. Uh, get that practice in. Send me any questions, message me, or post them in the forum.